It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Shap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. And by Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high-yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top-quality hospitality assets. And now, From the Short Grass, here is your host, Trey Schapp. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Schapp. Scotty Scheffler, back atop a leaderboard after the Arnold Palmer Invitational presented by MasterCard. He finishes at 15 under for the tournament, a five shot victory over Wyndham Clark, who finished second at minus 10. Shane Lowry finished at minus nine and in third place. But Scotty Scheffler, able to solve his putting woes on the greens at Bay Hill in Orlando, Florida, and he is back atop a leaderboard. Congratulations to him. As the PGA Tour turns to what some consider the fifth major the Players' Championship at TPC Sawgrass this week. Have you ever wanted to play TPC Sawgrass? You can. It's open to the public. All you got to do is go to their website, tpc.com slash sawgrass, and you can play where the pros play. Coming up in this episode of From the Sawgrass, I sit down with Brett Norsworthy of Sports 56 WHBQ in Memphis. Brett graduated from the University of Arkansas as a big Razorback fan. He works on the Ole Miss radio network for their games, does pregame, halftime, and postgame shows for Ole Miss football. Stats loves the game of golf and has covered the PGA Tour stop in Memphis from the early 90s up until today. And he tells me, outside of college football, if there were one sport that he could cover, it would be golf. You're going to hear that coming up. In a matter of minutes, I want to thank Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels, they know how to manage hotel properties. Matthew Allen, Blair Allen, if you need an overnight place to stay, make sure it's a Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel property. Find them on the web at bphotels.com. We're back after this. At Stevens, our philosophy is to invest every dollar as if it were our own, to seize opportunity, to anticipate rather than react to deliver constant focus in an ever-changing world and to pursue the objectives of our clients in order to help them reach their financial goals. A proven history of helping companies and individuals. Stevens, member NYSE SIPC. Heading to El Dorado to check out some live music or to play Mystic Creek? Stay at the Haywood, the only boutique hotel in the middle of downtown and the Murphy Arts District. If you are spending a weekend in Hot Springs, make plans now at the Marriott Courtyard close to Lake Hamilton and Oakwan. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group manages both of these fine properties and you will rest easy knowing that your every need is taken care of. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels on the web at bphotels.com. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. If you're a listener of the Sunday Buzz with Bill Vickery, there's no doubt, especially during football season, you've heard the voice of Brett Stats Norsworthy. If you've listened to Drive Time Sports during their coverage of SEC Football Media Days or Morning Mayhem during the coverage of SEC Football Media Days, you've heard Stats on the radio. Stats knows SEC football, knows college football inside and out, and loves the game of golf. On the tee, Brett Stats Norsworthy. Brett, thanks for joining me on From the Short Grass. I got to ask because I call you Stats all the time. So where did you get the name Stats? I think I have a good idea of where it came from, but who gave you the name Stats? Trey, I'd never had a nickname in my life, and I don't mind it at all. It, it, and certainly with people that do it you know, fun and lovingly, and it beats a lot of other nicknames out there. <laughs> but I never had a nickname in my life. And my first day on the air with the late George Lapidus, he asked me, do you have a nickname? I went, no. He goes, nobody's ever called you by anything. No. He said, basically like an animal house, your new pledge name is Stats. I went, okay. Nobody's ever called me that. And it stuck. And it, But it's really stuck with people – Trey, I, I say that really don't know me. My college friends, my hometown friends, 
my longtime friends, it almost amazes me when they do call me mm-hmm. that. But but when people do, I I don't I don't mind it. But no, I mean you know I, I'm I'm Brett to them or or Norsworthy. But I, I you know I don't mind. But it started with George Pete as my first day on there, September tenth, nineteen ninety two. And, Bill, Bill and Vickery calls you stats all the time. He he does, and tell you a great story. I'm at a I'm at the Ole Miss Arkansas basketball game in Oxford in January, and and kind of in the nice club area downstairs for the game. I wouldn't and, expect you to be anywhere else. And, and <laughs> nice lady from Benton, really nice Lowell Buzz listener, Lowell Sunday Buzz Bill Vickery listener. She came over and introduced herself to me, and a guy who was with Brad Logan said, "This, this is Brett Norsworthy." She said, "That's your name." You really go by that? I said, yeah, that's my name. <laughs> in fact, it's my middle name, my full name, Adam Brett. A lot of my college friends called me that because he was, uh, was on our fraternity shingle. But uh, I said, yes. Yeah. She goes, I never knew you had a, like a real name. I go, oh, yeah, I do. But, uh, but I, I, don't mind, I don't mind it at all. And, and you know, it, it's mostly in fun. But George Lapita started it at that same time. Georgia just left WREC 600 in Memphis to go to 560, a really – at that time, it largely playing simulcast country music. Mm-hmm. And the owner of WHPQ, Dr. George Flynn, who owns it now, was getting into sports business and it was a big get to get George to move, but he couldn't bring along his co host at the time, who was contractually bound still to 600. And the person he was with, he liked, but I, I saw it as my opening through friends to make a call to, you know, to get a chance. And, and, uh, and it kind of in typical George fashion, the night before my first day, he said, uh, you better be good. See you tomorrow at 3.30. We go on at 4. We'll talk about money then. Boom. And, Trey, we know how big 1992 was. That was Arkansas's first year in the SEC. Mm-hmm. That was divisions in the SEC. Man, I, I came in at a good time, and there was a lot going on, Arkansas basketball, You know what, what it was doing at, at that time. But even, even in football and how, how all the stadiums have so changed since that year, how all the sports information directors have so changed – and we see it with our friend Claude Felton retired. Yeah, no doubt. And I mean, that 92 season, the basketball championship game in 92, the first SEC tournament that Arkansas was a part of was in Birmingham. But then I think the next year after it, it was in Memphis, right? 92, spring of 92. Or maybe Lexington. Lexington. Spring of 92. Remember, basketball was the entree for SEC. Right. And, and Missouri and A&M, it was football. And it will be for Texas and OU, it will be football. It'll be interesting to see if it's Virginia and North Carolina next January in, in the SEC because it's growing. We're, we're, we're going to 20. No doubt. And we've got to get to 18 after, after we're at 16. But, yeah, 90, spring of 92 was Birmingham. And that was when Shaq and the, the brawl with them in Tennessee happened. And Alabama with Wimp Sanderson beat Arkansas, 93 Lexington, then in 94 in Memphis. And by that time, you know, I, I, I had it going pretty good. And, and it, you know, it was so fun to see so many Razorback fans there. And that Saturday, Arkansas lost in the semis to Kentucky. 94. Was Jimmy Martinez in, in Kentucky. Right, and they lost in the semifinals. And Nolan Arkansas loved did. it. Yeah. In fact. It in woke the, his team up. In in the back area, George Lapitas and – a, a great sports writer in Memphis named Bobby Hall with the commercial appeal. We were in the back back area, and he said, "Well, I got to go in there and cuss my team out, but I'm so glad we lost." <laughs> he says, "We because we can go home now on Saturday, get out to the ranch, Rose, have the team out, have the TV cameras out, see where we are on the bracket, and get ready for a run." And run they went on. Let's talk golf. This is a golf podcast. When did you first pick up the game, Trey? I was late to it. I, I didn't play and really until college, and you know, it was just so bad like a lot of people when they start but loved it always loved watching it on tv mm-hmm. of course the masters was kind of the first tv golf but one of the first kind of captivating tv moments for me was lee trevino u.s open 71 or so and then when he would come to memphis how magnetic and what a big personality lee trevino was but started playing in college loved it and and you know like like everybody started at shooting 120 and unlike you uh you know no i, I shot that early on first time to break 100 oh yeah tiger woods leaving augusta national in a green jacket could not be any happier than the first time to card 99 you know and then you know kind of get a little better incrementally and had a guy that gave me lessons in memphis the late jimmy ellis good good player good teacher he told me, he said, I can take anybody from 120 to 80. He said, I can take anybody. He said, it's hard to take anyone from 80 to 70. He said, from 120 to 80 is easy. 
from 80 to 70 is hard. I didn't really know what he meant then. But he's right. You got to really practice. You got to practice the right way. Right. You got to learn the right way, and then practice the right way. And you got to be dedicated to it, like like you do with your sharp game. But but back to Lee Trevino. So I, I'd never been to a, a a golf event in my life till summer of 1980, and friends of mine had been going to the Memphis Stop. And at that time, we were kind of mid to late June. It was after the U.S. Open, but before Fourth of July. And Maybe all, not as hot. No, <laughs> hotter than blue blazers in 1980. Record hot. Oh summer. yeah, that's right. That was a record heat wave. Dave Brown, lo- Channel Five local TV weatherman in Memphis, did the weather live from the golf tournament that night, and had a had a you know big thermometer out there, and it was like 108 in the in, in the shade. And we we went and literally driving home, I asked friends of mine in the car. I said, "Now when do you hit a five iron instead of a pitching wedge?" and what is a, a three wood or I mean, and he walked me through every. I literally knew nothing, and I bring that up, Trey, because a few years ago, and I I, I, know, I know it's the buzz in, in every radio station. There's a lot of summertime interns. We had a young man at our station, great youngster, great youngster. He didn't know which end of a golf club to hold. He, oh he just knew nothing about it. Yeah, and he's out there at the golf tournament that week, kind of running down guests for us. You you know the drill. And I asked him, I said, Andre. First time you've ever been at a golf course, isn't it? He said, yeah. I said, you know what? I was here for the first time, too, 1980. I said, it, it doesn't just happen. You don't just show up, and and and, and it, it happened. You, you, you've got to learn. So we went summer 1980. Trevino was was Mr. Memphis. And in the history of our tournament, I think he's probably the number one gallery person. John Daly was probably two. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that we've gone world or kind of world golf and, and a playoff event, I think Rory's really popular, but nothing like Trevino and Daly was. But it started going to old, uh, to New Colonial, way out in, in East Memphis. Yeah. I mean, the Merry Mex, as they call him, was. just had a way of bringing the crowd in. Didn't he, he? He, he did. And, and we hit a, a stretch in the, our tournament years in Memphis. The year Al Guyberger shot the 59, we were not even on TV. We, we had lost our spot on television. When he holed out on the ninth green at, at New Colonial, there probably wasn't 30 people uh, around. I mean, now there are a million that sure. claim to have been there, and I, I sure wasn't. That was in 77. That saved the Memphis PGA Tour stop. CBS got back on the next year. Andy Bean won in 78. And in that stretch, President Ford, after his presidency, came and played in the Pro-Am and had a hole in one oh, wow. at the pro am, and it, you know that went international. Sure, you know former president of the United States, Makes big golfer, a hole in one. Yeah. J- Jerry Ford, and he had a hole in one, and it was a member of the Memphis media, Mike, the late Mike Fleming, a sports writer, at Commercial Peel, that was playing in that group that day, and that kind of saved our event, and, you know, and then FedEx saved it, and you've been over and covered it a million times. The move to TPC Southwind when it was built, what was that like for that tournament? Well, it was it was revolutionary. It, it was quite literally groundbreaking because it was built for stadium golf. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of tough views out at, out at Colonial and w- moved out there for the tournament. The last one at Colonial was in 88. Jody Mudd won, got up and down on 17, closed out on 18. So we moved out there in 89. John Mahaffey won in 89, you know, former PGA champ. And it was nothing like it is now. None of those houses. I mean, just nothing like it is now. I like Southwind, but it's a what you see is what you get golf yeah. course. It's nothing... It's nothing spectacular about it. It's not bad. I don't want to run anybody's golf course down. I'm I'm really not trying to, but it's not great. But it's pretty much what you see is what you get, right? There there it is. It's in front of you. A a lot of the holes are kind of the same in in some cases. And then it comes down to, you know, the the par 5, 16, tough par 4, 17, and 18. 18 is a tough finishing hole. Tough finishing hole. I'm not going to say it's the toughest finishing hole in golf because I don't think it is. But it's one that you have to be thinking the whole way through it, and and that's kind of the TPC finishing holes. Yeah, I mean a lot of them, a lot of those kind of are pattern a lot. after eighteen at TPC Sawgrass. It, it, it sure is, and so you know that that's where it started. So I really liked it, and th- and got to Fayetteville in college. We started playing golf at Razorback Golf Course. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and, <laughs> and, whoo, and uh, good thing I'm not going to run anybody's golf course down. And then when we could really step out. Go to Fayetteville Country Club and play. FCC. I loved it. I loved it then. Yeah. I love it now. I love the views. We'd play at Springdale. It was just nine holes in the yeah. day. We'd play there. And then when I went to Washington, uh, really had picked it up and was, was play it, playing a lot up there. Got to play it. 
Congressional. Got to play at Avondale. I was going to play ask Army, you, Navy. Congressional. Yeah. I mean, hosted well, U.S. Open. Yeah. One of the biggest clubhouses there is, it, it, if not the biggest. It's so stately and the history of it. You know, the forerunner to the CIA, the OSS, you know, they, they drilled and practiced out there during the war. You know, it's, it's, it's very historic. I was there the summer that they made the move in the Kemper from the from Congressional to Avenel. Mm-hmm. When you've broadcasted from the FedEx, back when it was a St. Jude Classic, now it's, you know, a playoff event. It's been a World Golf Championship event as well. Who are some of the players that you've interviewed on your show that have stood out to you? Uh, Russ Cochran, one of, one of my favorite people of all time. And I told him we should legally change your name in in Memphis to Paducah, Kentucky native Russ Cochran. Because that's how we would always introduce him. Leaderboard updates. Yeah. Oh, Paducah, Kentucky native Russ Cochran at four under. Uh, two holes. We'd always do that with him. He was so nice. Jim Gallagher Jr., yeah. who, who won in 95. Dickie Pride. Uh, when he won in Memphis at twenty, when he was 25 years old, in 1994, he was young and precocious, mm-hmm. as I was in 1994 as well. And to see him battle through a lot of injury and health stuff and to go on to have the, the champion career he had in the regular tour, Phil Mickelson was great to us. John Daly, as I said, with Lee Trevino right up there with Mr. Memphis. But how we cover it is very different. Did you ever cover it when it was the media room was downstairs? Oh, yeah, underneath. Okay. Yeah, underneath. Back in summer of 93. back where they parked the golf carts. It, it's where the golf carts are right now. In summer of 93, the late Paul Hartledge, who was Tiger football and basketball announcer, and George Lapidus were at SEC Media Days, yep. the week of the golf tournament. That's how late Media Days used yeah. to be. And I didn't, I didn't make the cut. I didn't make the travel roster for Media Days. So I was kind of handling everything at the golf tournament. And then they got back in time to be out there on Friday. Well, this is how much it's changed and how much I've changed, too. We're drinking beer on the air doing the show. I mean, like during the break, hey, get a couple buds for me. <laughs> That's Vickery's kind of show. And it, it, it was then. And, and, you know, now, I mean, you, you don't see anybody drinking no. in a media room or anything. I mean, it was pretty ribald, really horrible, babe. Lucky I, lucky I kept a job. A million miracles. <laughs> I kept a job. And, you know, and then it, it, most people know about me. I, I quit drinking fall of 93. And, and a lot of cha- lot changed after that. But, I've had so much fun covering golf. Trey, I tell people, seriously, I'm not pat- I'm not patronizing you because I'm on a golf show. If I could just cover one thing and just do it year-round, it, it would be college football. Golf would be second. And, and baseball is my favorite sport, but the baseball players are such tools. I mean, I, I just I mean, I can't. My favorite sport, the guys are about the worst in the sport. And the old saying, if you want to really look at your heroes different, get to know them and i don't like going to st louis credentialed i yeah. don't want to be in the clubhouse i don't want to be down there you know, when Pujols is in a, a two for 12 schneid and he's off-putting is i don't blame him for See, being i got to talk to Pujols after he played some golf so i mean it was good exactly <laughs> and, and, and 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 i and i love him but i want to go to st louis to go to baseball yeah. I, I don't want to go there to be media guy. Well, we can talk about the Cubs too if you want. We you can. Know, Cody Bellinger's back. Yeah, he he is, and the Cubs <laughs> got a chance this year in that division. The Cubs got a chance. I think they do. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's a long season, obviously. When you look at the game and the way it's changed, and now with live golf, where do you see this going? I don't think we know, and I don't think they know. I think Jay Monahan, who I love and who was who's been great to us in Memphis, and I think got a really tough draw with all this i don't think they know and now we we've almost made the tour about a 10 event a year deal Mm -hmm. and i i like the every weekend aspect of the tour and i I swear i i I would after college football i would cover it full time second if i could and especially the vibes of a major when you're out at a major been been at bell reeve in st louis a couple times uh 92 pga when nick price won in, in summer of 2018 when Brooks Kepka won. But the story of 2018 in St. Louis was oh, Tiger, Tiger Woods. It was. The, the, the reception he got, and I think that, that was the starting point for Tiger in summer of 2018 in St. Louis. Middle America, Midwestern, St. Louis, summertime, and the fans adoring him. And I think he, he was like, man, you know, they really do love me. Maybe a revival tour. Then the next April yeah. at Augusta. And him winning it early on that Sunday morning, I was there. 
and, it, and cold chills. One of the top three or four things I've done in sports is to be there for him to close it out. And he's right there with the patrons at Augusta National with the Golden Bear. What's it like, Brett, when you're at Augusta National and you hear those roars and you know that that's a Tiger roar? It's just different. It's the single best sporting venue out there. In the cathedrals of American sport, You, I, I think the the Rose Bowl Stadium, L.A. Coliseum, Wrigley Field, Fenway Park, Churchill Downs, we, we know the cathedrals. Number one to me is Augusta National. Two times in my life. And and I, the high I get, the, the natural high I get, when I clear the ramp and I walk in, I, I see the field for the first time, the, mm-hmm. the diamond for the first time, the court for the first time. I still get that eye every time I go. But two times in my life that I've walked into a venue and almost my knees buckled and tears came to my eyes. Two times. The first time I ever kind of wound through that patron hospitality area. And then you get there and poof, there it is, all in front of you, kind of down the side of one yep. at Augusta National. Yep. Right by the big scoreboard. And and, and right by it, and the, the, the media room yep. used to be over uh, right behind it. They, they've changed that to an even nicer area. Now, the first time I got that that, that vista, that, that, that in my eye, I, I thought, man, 10, 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 15-year-old Brett would be really pleased. The other one, I went to the Rose Bowl game. The year Oklahoma and Georgia, it was a semifinal game. Mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield, Heisman Trophy winner, quarterback for for Oklahoma, SEC team, Georgia in it, and cleared through that long tunnel you, you that every entrance has at the Rose Bowl Stadium. And when I got that first sign of those, those mountains, that field, that setting, this is what I used to dream, dream about. And, and, Trey, I can say it. I don't know how much longer I got. I hope plenty of time on planet Earth or in sports otherwise. Every dreams come true. Wow. Every dreams wow. come true. World Series, football, Super Bowls, college football. Bucket golf. list items the, crossed off. Number one is Open Championship at St. Andrews. And and I, I'm, I'm I hopefully, good Lord willing, cross it off in 27. I believe that's when it's back there. Yeah, back, yeah. In, the back women, in 27. I believe the women are there this year. That's number one. And and I've, I've never been. Uh, have, have you been on a Scotland golf trip? Yeah, last summer. Oh, how how great! Played the old course with Joe Foley. Did you uh? Did you get down on all fours and kiss the Swilkin Bridge? I'm going to. I'm going to get down I, and kiss. I did it. not do that. I did take pictures on it. I walked across it. But I tell you, stats. What got me is when Coach Foley, who would have never gone on this trip unless I asked him to, big Cardinal baseball fan by the way. We went over there for the London series. Oh, that's right. I, I did. Yeah, you told and, me. And yeah, we walked. Days you told we me. walked off. 18 and he hugged me after he made his par on 18 and he said it's the best day i've ever had on a golf course i, I, can't, I can't wait to do it what time of day did y'all play we teed off at 4 30 p.m that's even better that's even better sun was setting as we you know kind of came down 17 18 you start to look back and you see all the undulations what'd you, what'd you hit on the, the road fairway? on the tee oh driver you take it right over the hotel best round you've ever shot and where was it oh it, it, 76 Far City Country Club, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and I promise you, that in, in the toughest hole there is seventeen, and it was the last remaining hole there I had never made birdie on. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to admit this though, pretty good drive, not great, what not very long, pretty good drive, seven wood to four feet. <laughs> there you go, seven wood to four feet made the putt, and I'm not kidding you, did a rich beam. When he won it, because I knew, I, you know, get get home on eighteen fairly fairly easy, and uh, shot seventy six, and I'm I'm not kidding you, wanted wanted to celebrate. That's awesome. And and and, 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 and what people don't understand is, you know, for for y'all around ha- handicap, you know, plus one or even minus to break eighty, that was so magical mm-hmm. from you know. Literally tote. I can remember toting up scorecards. Well, yeah, one seventeen. You know, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and, and kind of puffy over yeah. one ten. You I need know? to get a calculator out to figure out what and, I shot, and then to you know to a couple times to break eighty, but then that seventy six. You know, at, at home and a lot of fun. That's awesome. Best golf course you've ever played? There's so many. Our state has a, a, a lot of them. I I think I think it's congressional. I think 
Uh, but but the, the, I, I, I've been lucky. Uh, we, we have so many here mm-hmm. uh, that are so much fun. Uh, Memphis Country Club's really good, real good. It was fun in the day when you'd go in the grill there and Dr. Kerry Middlecoff would be in there. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and a very approachable. Would, 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 wanted to. Yeah. And would, would want to tell to the talk. stories. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think people, I, I know they don't know and probably don't care, but he was kind of TV's first big golf analyst. In the early days, Byron Nelson was really mm-hmm. good. There was a British accent, Scottish accent. Sir Henry Longhurst was was really good in the day uh, at Augusta. And you, you know what the, what the Masters has done for golf, and, and when when you go to it, every sporting event should learn from the treatment at Augusta National of their patrons, of their fans. The simplest thing on earth to do is be nice. Mm-hmm. Be nice to your customer. And they are so kind over there. And they mean, good morning, welcome they to Augusta National. It. Welcome to Augusta National. Hope you have a good day. When you leave, hope you had fun at the Masters Day. Now, I know people right now are listening and thinking, yeah, you, anybody can do it for a week. Well, most sporting events, really the Masters now with the event the week before, is really two weeks. Mm-hmm. It's really about 10 days at the golf course. Well, a college football season it's only about seven at the stadium. Yeah. Your home games at the most, you're going to get eight. That's it. So why can't you be nice those days? I agree. And the next thing, why can't you be clean? You don't see any trash. You almost take it as a point of pride of if you if you see something on the you ground, pick it up. you want to pick it up. Yeah. It makes you be better. The The Masters has accomplished that, and and I, I, it, it's it's my favorite event to go to. Of anything, I've been I've been six times, sixteen days on the course. So that's the equivalent of, that's of, nice. of, of four full yeah. tournaments. Yeah, and and you know to be there for Tiger in 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 twenty nineteen and love him. And this is what I always say about Tiger. I say it on my show. I say it anytime. I love Tiger Woods, the golfer. That's all I want to know him as. Guess what? Tiger doesn't want to run with me. Yep. And I probably I can't afford to run with him, and probably don't want to. I want to watch him swing at club. And I think you can make the case he's been the best to ever do it. I know I know the number for Jack Nicholas is is more, and I don't want to do anything to criticize Jack Nicholas, but you, I I can, I can argue that Tiger's better. I think you got a good solid argument there. All right, fantasy for some living or deceased, three other golfers that you could play around to golf with. Who would they be? Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholas, and probably Ben Crenshaw, mm. and just to hear him tell stories and his knowledge that walking history book that he is you know he's the de facto champions dinner ringleader yeah. at, at, at augusta i mean he, he knows the history of golf so well uh just get him to tell carl jackson stories oh my gosh would, would, yeah. would be worth it to hear carl jackson tell ben crenshaw stories would be worth it I, I think that'd be the other three if if i could have someone not from golf and he famously played at augusta national on a very controversial day was Ronald Reagan. And that was the day the the some lunatic tried to storm the gates while he's out there playing and and the Secret Service did their thing. Uh th- th- that would be fun, but love Jack Nichols went to the Ohio State Michigan game last year, fall of twenty two, uh, a season ago, and went to the Jack Nicholas Museum on mm-hmm. campus mm-hmm. in Columbus. It's not far from the horseshoe Horseshoe was great. Michigan, Ohio State was great. Going to the Nicholas Museum was the best part of the weekend. Every trinket you can think of, every badge, belt decal, hat, everything you can think of, they have it there. It's right there on Man. campus, and 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 to be on Jack Nicholas Freeway uh, uh, around Columbus is, is really cool. I got to see that stats. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate you stopping by. Anytime for y'all, Trey. Anytime for you. Heading to El Dorado to check out some live music or to play Mystic Creek? Stay at the Haywood, the only boutique hotel in the middle of downtown and the Murphy Arts District. If you are spending a weekend in Hot Springs, make plans now at the Marriott Courtyard close to Lake Hamilton and Oakwan. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group manages both of these fine properties and you will rest easy knowing that your every need is taken care of. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels on the web at bphotels.com. That's all the time for this edition of From the Shoregrass. I want to thank Stats for coming in and spending some time with me. And remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. 
and I hope to see you sometime soon from the short grass. You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.